In my last video, I extracted 24 karat pure gold from this blob. In this episode, we turn our attention to silver. When refining the blob, I was left with a lot of silver chloride. The mission for this video, convert that silver chloride into pure silver. Originally, I wasn't even planning on trying this, but part one was a massive success and so many of you asked for it, so here it is. That video is currently sitting at over 2 million views, by the way, which I do believe a toast is in order. To chemistry. And... Jesse. Yes. Yes, science! It's time to cook. If you are back for part two and still haven't liked and subscribed, I invite you to say, say my name and do it now. It's time to begin. Taking a look at this silver chloride for the first time in six weeks, it still has this bright, vibrant green color. Some of the sludge was easily scooped up and dropped into a fresh beaker, while much of it not so easy. When saving the silver chloride, I had mixed it in with the filter papers I used during the previous refining process. By now, the paper has become incredibly soggy. I quickly see that it's going to be nearly impossible to separate it from the silver chloride. I determine that my best path forward is to drop it all into the beaker. I kick things off by adding 500 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. I specifically use this acid because it won't react with silver, but it will help break down the paper. By taking a look at the reactivity series for metals, we see that hydrogen is more reactive than silver, meaning that adding hydrochloric acid to silver will produce little to zero reaction. I let everything soak for an hour, then mixing with a stir rod, the paper easily disintegrates. I'm tempted as it's starting to look like another drink we should not taste. A forbidden smoothie, perhaps. I turn on a little heat to help the paper along. It's pretty neat, but you can see the silver chloride start to settle at the bottom of the beaker. After a few minutes, I take it off the heat and allow everything to settle. And this is just really cool. You can see three distinct layers in the beaker, which I can only assume is the silver chloride on bottom, the paper in the middle, and the hydrochloric acid on top. I'm going to let things cook a little longer to give the paper more time to dissolve. Once everything settles the second time, I discern that the middle paper level is not as prominent this time around. I'm satisfied enough to move to the next step of the refining process. I'm next going to slowly pour off or decant the hydrochloric acid. These next steps are really important. I need to rinse, clean, and isolate the silver chloride. I first pour in the hot water, Swish it around and decant it off. Pour, wash, decant. Pour, wash, decant. I eventually decide a system with three beakers is best. The first contains the bulk of my silver chloride. The second acts as a buffer, capturing any small traces of silver that accidentally pour out. I can easily recapture this silver chloride and add it back to the fold. The third beaker acts as the bulk of my stock water, this is eventually added to a stock pot once it reaches capacity. The goal is to have zero silver making its way to the bucket. Through a number of hot water baths, we can see just how far we've come in cleaning the silver chloride. Next, I'll use ammonia to test for copper, which should be long gone by now. But if any copper remains, it will react by precipitating a light blue color. Adding the ammonia, I see no color change, which means we are now ready to convert the silver chloride to silver oxide. This conversion happens with the addition of sodium hydroxide. The result is an exothermic reaction that generates a lot of heat. It's imperative to thoroughly mix in the sodium hydroxide, so I improvised by using an Allen wrench attached to my cordless drill. I keep adding sodium hydroxide and mixing it until there's no more trace of the white silver chloride. Now that the silver chloride has been converted to silver oxide, the last major reaction to do is convert that silver oxide into pure silver powder. 
This is done by simply adding glucose. Yes, that's right, just add sugar. Slowly pouring the sugar into the beaker, we can see that it's having a hard time penetrating the surface and dissolving. I gave it some encouragement with the stir rod and added a bit more sugar to try to stimulate a reaction. I still needed to stir it in, and at this point I'm realizing that the reaction is trying to happen, but the contents of the beaker are just too dense. Things got fun when I decided to add a bit of H2O. It was like a volcano ready to erupt. I'm not a chemist, so I can't tell you exactly what's happening here, but it seemed like adding water gave the reaction permission to breathe. Not only that, it went exactly how I had hoped. I watched in glee as pure silver sank to the bottom and silver flashing appeared on the wall of the beaker. Eventually, the reaction died down a bit, but I was amazed at just how much natural heat radiated from the beaker. I could see my pure silver just waiting for me, and you better believe I was super excited to get straight to melting. But if there's one thing this gold and silver refining project has taught me, it's patience. And I needed to repeat a few very important steps. That's right, you guessed it. Pouring, washing, and decanting. We want to make sure that all the sugar and lye is completely rinsed out of the silver, so I repeated this bathing process multiple times. Like I did with the gold, I give the silver a single bath in hydrochloric acid, this time to help rinse out the impurities and prepare the beaker for neutralization. I give it a few more baths and then it's time to test the pH level. I'll do this by using these pH indicator strips. There's a handy color code indicator on the back of the bottle and I simply need to dip the strip into my beaker then match the strip color with the corresponding color on the bottle. That gives you your reading. The goal here is to get a neutral seven, which is green. Just for fun, I'm going to dip a strip into my stock pot. As you can see with the color, it's reading 14, which is just about as alkaline as you can get. Checking on my beaker strip, it's looking dark yellow orange, maybe around a three or a four, definitely on the acidic side which means I'll need to perform some more rinsing to try and raise that to a seven. And I figured a good way to do this would be to bring the water to a soft boil. Dipping a new strip down into the beaker, I let it soak for a bit, and when I remove it, I could see it was a solid six. So close. But you know I can't stop there, right? Just one more pour and bath, Dropping the indicator strip down inside, we have green. Now that the silver has been neutralized, it's time to prepare for melting. Using low heat, I start to dry out the silver powder. As the beaker heats up, the silver on the sides of the beaker starts to fall to the dry surface below. This is pure silver powder. And like the gold previously, it's a medium of silver I've never seen or used before. I just can't wait to melt it down. Speaking of, I recently melted down my old website and replaced it with this new one. I currently have three beautiful rings for sale and plan to add more on a weekly basis. What's great is each ring can also be customized to meet your wants and desires. Visit moderngoldsmith.com to learn more, click the links, go crazy, and thank you for supporting small business. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, fine silver powder becomes pure solid metal. Just the same as the gold, from blob it came, to blob it returns.
I present to you pure silver and its beautiful sheen. This is one of those moments where I just feel so much joy in the journey and gratitude that I was even able to learn something new. And the final weight? 25 grams. A nice haul, though. I can't help but feel like maybe I could have achieved a greater yield if I paid more attention to preserving the silver chloride during the gold refining process. I was just so laser focused on the gold and making sure that I didn't mess everything up, I feel like maybe a little bit of silver got away from me. All that being said, I'm just incredibly happy that I was even able to work through the silver refining process successfully. Don't worry guys, <laughs> it's unforbidden orange juice. One last toast to the blob itself. I also wanna thank Nile Red and Sri Tips for their incredibly helpful and informative videos. I really couldn't have done mine without them. Also, I'm so thankful to all you beautiful chemistry enthusiasts and people watching this. I got just so many kind comments and tips and recommendations. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below what I should make with this blob, like what kind of jewelry I should make, and I'll maybe do that in the next video.